Hey, this is Cheryl Spangler, and I am about to walk through the most comprehensive instruction-based how-to video series on how to get your business legally up and running in less than 36 hours. Let me just start by saying that I have started somewhere around 12 businesses, and at one point I thought, I'm just a master at starting them. <laughs> but I did make some profitable, and I am working on making one extremely, extremely profitable right now. And this is going to be what I work on for the rest of my life. And so I thought it doesn't matter how much education you have, how much college you have, how young you are, how old you are, how intelligent you are. It doesn't matter how much money you have. A lot of people do not know how to start a business. I mean, like how to get it up and running legally and quickly. So I want to go through this. This is going to be a very nuts and bolts, like take notes, get a notepad, get a pen. Um, a lot of stuff I'm going to show you through video and then you can take notes, but you can keep these videos. You can rewatch them as many times as you need. I'm also, it's important to know that I'm going to show you exactly how to start a business in the state of Virginia. Now, if you are not in the state of Virginia, then you need to just take the information I share with you and go find that version in another state. Meaning when I talk about how to get your LLC done quickly for $100, that's I'm going to show you the website for Virginia. And all you need to say to yourself is, oh, I live in Texas. Let me find the State Corporation Commission website for Texas. Same thing applies. This is all universal. Doesn't matter what business. It doesn't matter what state it will apply. But I'm going to show you exactly how to do it in the state of Virginia. So. Uh, let's go to slide two. What I'm going to cover this. There's only five slides here. What I'm going to cover in this four part video series is on video one. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the prerequisites to starting a business. And it's before you dive into let me go get an EIN number. Let me go create a, an LLC. There's a couple of things you should think about just a few. And I want to talk about those video two. We're going to talk about how to go get your EIN number within like 30 seconds, how to get your LLC same day, how to, how to, you know, do business as one name, but the LLC is another name and what you need to do to do that is called a trade name and how to, what do you do after that? Like if you, if you are in a brick and mortar and you're not internet based, then you're going to need to go get a local business license as well. People forget that. Then they get taxed on it and then they get literally taken to court over not doing a business license properly. And you can also avoid doing a business license initially if you're not making a lot of profit yet. And an operating agreement, what one looks like. Um, I have a couple samples you can download. These are real operating agreements. One of them I created myself and the other one I paid $400 for legal zoom to create. You can take those, duplicate them, change your information, whatever. Video three, I'm going to talk about how to open up a business banking account, what you should look for, what you should avoid, and things that will literally take you weeks that I will show you how to do in one day. How to send invoices to people, how to keep track of your finances. This is not difficult. You're literally listening to someone who spent 10 years avoiding QuickBooks. And I'm going to show you that it is the best thing that you've ever done for yourself and how it will make your life easier and how you do not need to be smart in order to do QuickBooks. Uh, also, Dropbox, I'm going to talk about cloud storage because you should never, ever, ever, ever store everything about your business on a computer. Next, email, how to set that up properly so you look legit and professional quickly for $4.99 a month. And a website, uh, you'll need one else. You literally will not exist in this world because these days and this presentation is being done 2019, 2019 and beyond. If you don't have a website, you basically don't exist and you're not real, which is sad, but it's true. And video four, social presence, because once you have a business up and running, you can't just say, oh, build it and they will come behind the scenes. You have to get out there, be social, be present, and you have to have a business social presence. That is not your personal profile. So that's what we're going to cover. And um, so let's just dive right in. So video one, prerequisites to starting. 
I want to give you a second to read because the very first thing that you should make the most important before you decide to start a business is mindset. You need to know that most businesses fail. Actually, more than 80% of businesses that are started fail. Thousands and thousands of people start businesses every day in the United States and outside the United States. And most of them fail within two years because of one thing. Okay, well, first of all, they fail because they run out of cash, but they never really get to the two year mark if you don't have the right mindset that you are gonna succeed, you're not in this for a quick money turnaround, you're not flipping a home, and if that is your business, great, but this is not a 30 day, I'm gonna be a millionaire. You will be a millionaire. That's one thing you need to understand, you will be a millionaire, but you need to have the confident mindset that this is gonna work and you're not gonna be a weak individual who basically tries for 30 days and says it doesn't work. This is not working. I don't know what's happening. I, well, first of all, you probably didn't try hard enough. You didn't try long enough. You didn't give it 24 months. You didn't give it six months. So the mindset is probably more important than anything. And that is that you will be a millionaire. You will make money and you will persist and you will keep your confidence and you will not listen to naysayers. And if you have a solid business idea and there are people out there that will pay for it, then you're going to make money. You just need to keep at it. And the second thing about the prerequisite is that you need to know about your business. You need to know what your business offers. You need to know about your clients and you need to decide what you're going to name it. So this entire prerequisite can be summed up with a document that I'm going to give you to download. And that is, this document called, um, I just call it the company avatar. So you can download this and fill it out and take time to do this before you do anything else, because you're going to know more about who you are, who you serve and what you can do for these people out in the world. And it starts by knowing about your business. So you're just going to decide the name of your business, um, what industry you serve. Just, this is good for you to just to write this down because somewhere quickly when we get started, you're going to be formulating a bio for your business and that will go on your social media that will go on your website that you will tell someone in an elevator oh what do you do and you're going to want to know the name of your business you're going to want to know the industry you serve specifically not just people that you're not serving humans you're not serving everyone you're serving who and you want to know specifically what kind of person what kind of individual are you serving what kind of business are you serving what kind of corporation and then you also want to know the purpose of your business. What's the purpose of your business? Why did you start it? What are you doing for people? Who are you helping? How are you making the world a better place? And then you need to know prerequisite to starting and doing any of this tactical stuff is about your clients. Who is your target market? Describe your ideal client, like their gender, their age, the interests, their location, any information about them that you know. What is the size of the business in your target market? Are these like, is your target market solopreneurs? Is your target market, that means like a one-stop shop person that does everything. Is your business a small business, a local small business, brick and mortar, has a store storefront? Is your business a corporation with, you know, up to 2,000 employees, up to 10,000 employees, up to 100,000 employees? Like who is and what is the size of the business you're targeting or person you're targeting? Maybe you're just targeting individual people. So that's fine. And also who are the key decision makers that you want to reach? Like this is something you can just leave this blank for now. Um, but think about it. And then also this goes in deep, deeper. What are your clients needs, wants, fears, and frustrations? This is going to help you when you go to market and you need to think about it and really need to think about it ahead of time, to be honest, because if you start a business and you don't have any clue about what the pain points are of the person you're serving, you're really, you're not really going to know, is this something people really need? Is, am I starting a business that will fail simply because I'm starting something that I have no clue if people even want it? So you want to know what keeps people up at night, what your, what your perfect client is afraid of, what are the top three frustrations they have, what trends are occurring that will occur in their business and their lives. You know, 
And also you want to ask, you know, what are the key problems your business is intending to solve for your clients? What problem are you solving? I will tell you that you will get paid the most money. Two ways to pay, get paid the most money. You solve a really big problem for a small amount of people, or you solve a problem for millions of people. So you're either going to make money because you're going to charge a huge amount of money because you solve a big problem for just a small niche of people that no one else does, or you're going to solve a problem that millions of people have and they're going to pay you a small amount of money, but you're going to make a ton of money from quantity. That's something to think about. Then you're going to ask, what is the qualification process of your clients? Like what if someone came to you today and you know what you do for them, what would, what would be the steps you would take someone through to get them from a first conversation to a paying client? It's important for you to know the steps because this is going to be part of your marketing and it's going to be like the four steps to whatever you solve. And the steps are really your qualification process. An example of that would be just for real estate, for example, four steps to buying a home. I know the qualification process for a buyer or seller is that I meet them. I ask them why they want to buy or move. I find out if they are qualified and then we find a home and then we close on a home. So there's like these steps. And last, you want to list the top market sectors you would like to target. So there are different markets for your clients. So if you're targeting to sell your businesses, to sell something to a solopreneur or like an individual person, what market segment are you selling to entrepreneurs in um, dentistry? Are you selling to entrepreneurs who are attorneys, who are real estate agents, who are um, people struggling with marketing needs? I mean, what is your business market segment? You also want to ask or list any market sectors that you don't want to target. So if your business is focused on um, you create you create course curriculums for teachers, then you want to list who you don't serve. You just want to know who you don't serve because then you're not going to market to them. Any additional information? So this, this document literally is like a prerequisite to starting because once you have all this straight in your mind, it's like, boom, okay, I'm ready. What do I do? What's the tactical, practical things I need to do to get this up and running? I know who I serve. I know who I am. I know what my plan is. I know what I problem I solve. And um, that's pretty much that. So right now I'm going to end this video because that's basically video one is for you to just understand who you are, who you serve, and have the right mindset. And then we're going to go on to video two. And video two is going to talk about um, diving in right to get and create your EIN, your SEC, LLC, your trade name, and everything else.